This is topic 79, growth and decay. Now, hopefully you should be able to recognize this function from Algebra 2, and if not from Pre-Cal, this is your, uh, your typical uh, growth or decay function, right? You have the initial value, P of 0, and normally this is K is a constant and T is time. So that's how you did that in uh, Algebra 2. So this is something very similar. As a matter of fact, we're going to actually kind of see for example, in this one, how we're going to go from this to something that looks like that. Okay, so in example one, uh, we have a, a coffee cup at temperature 180. Okay, and it's placed in a room that's temperature 68 degrees. And the, the change in temperature, okay, instead of me saying the differential equation, I'm just going to tell you that that is the rate of change of temperature. So how fast the temp temperature is changing is given by this equation right here. And we also know that the initial temperature was 180, which actually we got from here. Okay, so on A, it's asking us, after 10 minutes, what is the temperature of the coffee? Now, you got to be careful because this does not give you the temperature. This is how fast the temperature is changing. So what we have to do to this one is we have to integrate this in order to get the temperature of the coffee after 10 minutes. So we're going to have to integrate that. Remember this is like 78. We're going to have to get all the dy's on the left side, the dt's on the right side, and then just go from there. So we have 1 over 1 minus 68 dy is equal to the integral of negative point, uh, well, negative 0 0.11 dt. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and integrate that. Now, this might be a little difficult for you to kind of see what this is going to be, but remember, if you're trying to do this and you have no other way to do it, if I say that u is y minus 68 and du is equal to, well, that's just going to be dy, right? So, or 1 dy, whatever you want to call it. But I'm not, I'm not actually going to do the substitution here. I'm actually going to write what the answer is. But if you don't see how I got, I went to the next step, please use this u substitution. You'll see how I did that. Okay, so this, the integral of this is the natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus 68 and that's going to be equal to negative 0 0.11 uh, t plus c, like that. All right, and before we go on, before we figure out what happens after 10 minutes, we need to figure out what this c is. But, um, and I guess this is kind of optional, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to go ahead and solve for this. Because right, I'm going to have to eventually anyway. I'm going to have to solve for y because y represents the temperature of the coffee. So I'm going to solve for y here at this moment. So again, just like we talked about last time, I'm going to use Euler's number. Right on both sides. And that's not exactly how that works, but that's how I remember it. So we have, if I do that, that's going to cancel out and I'm going to end up with y minus 68. Remember that Euler's numbers in the natural log are inverses of one another. Okay, so that's how that works. So if you want to cancel out a natural log, use E. All right, if you want to cancel an E, use the natural log. They're inverses of one another. So this is going to be E to the power of uh, negative 0 0.11 T plus C. All right, so that's what we have. And then finally, um, what we can do here is we're going to plug in this value that's given to us at the very beginning to figure out the rest. All right, so y is 180 minus 68. That's equal to e, well, negative 0 0.11 times 0 plus c. Let me see, that was, this could be a little bit confusing for you. Let me backtrack just a little bit. All right, so let me backtrack just a little bit before I do that.
And I'm going to use something that I talked about on lesson 77, or 78, I'm sorry. And it'll work out the same if you go ahead and work it out like I had it, but it'll take me a little bit less steps for me to do that. Y minus 68 is equal to C e to the power of negative 0 0.11 t. All right, so this and this is the same. Okay. And yes, I can go ahead and do it like I was doing it, and I would get the same answer, but I want you to get used to seeing this, because that's going to save you some time. So now what we're going to have here is we're going to go ahead and plug in, like I said, plug y of 0 is equal to 180. So we have 180 minus 68 is equal to c e to the power of 0 0.11 times 0. So notice that this is going to be 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So c is equal to 112. All right, so our equation the formula that actually gives us temperature, remember y is temperature, y is equal to 112 e to the power of negative 0 0.11 t plus 68. And that 68 came from here. If I would have added a 68 here, that's how I got that. Okay. So that's our question for temperature. However, that's not really what it's asking us. All right, they're asking us the temperature. the temperature after 10 minutes or at 10 minutes really is well again I would have to plug in Tent right there and then use my calculator to get the answer and the answer would be 105.281 like that that would be the answer All right so after 10 minutes that's what I would get so it's actually the longest part of that notice again that this is sort of similar in a way uh, to the, the function that I have on the top okay so if I have for example um, this and this is very similar to one another comparing what I have started with and what I ended up with is actually very similar okay so anyway let's just go to B here because B is actually a lot shorter than that but on B it's actually me asking me approximately how long does it take for the temperature to drop to 75 well remember the Y is temperature alright so if Y is temperature that means that 75 remember I'm using this equation so that's 75 instead of y, and I'm just going to set that equal to 112 e negative 0 0.11 t plus 68. And then I have to solve for t. Now, yes, you can use the calculator and figure that out, but it's useful for you, at least if you're going to take this class again in college, to figure out how to do this by hand. All right, so. The first thing I have to do is remember that I have to get the T by itself, so I'm going to subtract, uh, let's see, let me think about this for a minute. Um, well, let's see, let me subtract 68, and that's a 7. So I have 7 is equal to 112 e negative 0.11 t. All right, then I have to divide by 112 before I do anything else. So I'm going to divide by 112. Now the question remains, how do I get that t from that s? It's an exponent right now. How do I get it out of there and make it a variable that I can solve for? Well, remember that the natural log is the inverse of E. So if I use the natural log on both sides, I would have the natural log of 7 over 112. 
s equal to let's see negative 0 0.11 t so that's how you do that and then you divide both sides by negative 11 or negative 0.11 0 0.11 So therefore, now you can use your calculator. You can put the T is equal to approximately uh, 25 minutes. Right, so that's how long it takes. Now finally on C, on C it's asking us to find the average temperature of the coffee during the first 10 minutes. All right, so we want to know the average temperature. So now this is when stuff that you did in the past kind of comes back because this last test is actually going to have quite a bit of that. Okay, so the average temperature, remember anytime you see average in terms of an integral, they're actually asking you to, so the average temperature, you have to do the good old, you know, 1 over B minus A integral. And this is a and b of f of x dx so that's really the formula for it if you remember that I know you probably will hate it but this is what I would have 10 minus 0 0 to 10 of and I'm actually going to use the temperature formula right so I'm going to try to use the temperature formula and I think what I'm going to do later however is I'm going to send you a little video about uh, from Khan Academy about uh, the average when you're looking for average in terms of calculus I think it's pretty useful and basically what I find out and I'll just go ahead and write it real quick here if you graph this this function right here without integrating what you have here and this is just a sketch of course you would have something like that and this would be a, around 180 up here and what you get out of this is you get 135.926. Okay, so that's what you actually get for that. So what you find out, and I don't really know how useful this is, I'll be honest, is that you find out that that right there is that Y coordinate right there. This is 135.926. What you find out is that really what you just found is the height. You find a height of a rectangle, and that rectangle, if you go between 0 and 10, remember this is 0 and this is 10, all right, the area of that, of that rectangle is the same as the area of the area under the curve. So that's, that's really what, the, what this is useful for. Now, why do we have to do that? I am not really sure what is useful in the real world. I'm just telling you that's how it works. So really... That right there gives you the height of the rectangle that would have the same area as this curve right here. So anyway, moving on to example two. Sorry, this is taking so long, but yeah, just get over it. Oh yeah, this is going to take a little while. My apologies ahead of time. All right, so example two. All right, so we have our the rate of growth of bacteria. Okay, so it's given to us, this is the rate of growth of bacteria. All right, and they really want us to find, we're gonna try to find an expression for Y that would actually give us the population of bacteria at any time, okay, using the information that is given to us. Notice that it says K is a constant, uh, Y is the number of bacteria present, the initial population is 1,000, and the population triples during its first five days. So we're actually going to use that information to solve for A because otherwise we wouldn't have enough. All right, so on A, so we have the, uh, let's see, A. Well, let me be consistent here. You should write that A in parentheses here. So we have dy dt is equal to ky. And I want to integrate that, so I'm going to integrate using separation of variables. So we have, let's see, the integral of 1, oops, 1 over y dy 
that's equal to the integral of k dt. Now notice that k is a constant. Okay, so k is a constant. So the integral of 1 over y is the natural log of the absolute value of y. And this right here would be k times t plus c. Okay? So before I go on, all right, remember that if I use Euler's number, I would have something like, um, I would have y is equal to e to the kt plus c, but by the homework that we've already done in the past, we know that this is exactly the same as having y is equal to c, e to the kt. And you can actually work the problem out the way you're used to by just uh, plugging in those numbers. So, so if you're not comfortable between this relationship right here that happens, that's okay. Um, you can just keep it like I had it here and then solve for that later. Right? But again, this is kind of what it's telling you. right? So if you have something that looks like that, the, the that can be written like this, basically. So, so that's all we have here. So that's not the answer. I need to find out really the initial population. So I need to figure out what k is. Right? So we're going to try to solve for k. We need, we need to figure out that constant, the constant of growth. So we're going to solve for k. So in order to do that, I noticed that my initial population was 1,000. OK, so well, so far. And again, if you don't see that, you know, like I feel like I'm skipping, skipping a bunch of steps. But if you don't see that, you can have a t is equal to 0. So a t is equal to 0, which will make that 0. y is equal to 1,000, and c is 1,000. Okay, so if that's what that is, then this would be, uh, this is what we have so far there. Therefore, this is the equation we have. And we still need to solve for t. Okay, so solve for k. So in order to solve for k, what we have to do here is we got to use that information that's given to us. It tells us that the population triples every five years. So if the population triples, we'll have 3,000 is equal to 1,000 e to the power of um, k, sorry, 5k, or, yeah, where t is 5. So that would give us, if I divide both sides by 1,000, I get the 3 is equal to e to the 5k. And then I have to use a natural log to get to this variable. So I have the natural log of 3. And it could be the absolute value of 3, but the absolute value of 3 is, again, just 3. And this just would be 5k. So again, I, took, I used the natural log on both sides. So I took the natural log of this, and I took the natural log of that. But because the natural log of e is will cancel that e, then I end up with 5k. Okay, so if you need a little bit of explanation of that, I can you can ask me when you see me. Okay, so now k therefore is going to be equal to the natural log of three over five, like that. Okay, so the answer therefore is y is equal to one thousand e to the power of t. And I'm actually going to write it like this, t over 5, well, okay, fine, I'll stop for a minute. I'll stop skip, skipping steps, t natural log of 3 over 5, it's more like, more like this, right? More like that. So you can write that answer if you want, or if you want to simplify it a little bit further, we have y is equal to 1,000 e t over 5. Notice that again, because the natural, this 5 is dividing this whole number, right? So I can actually divide this. I can actually put it, rewrite it like this. t over 5, natural log of 3. And if you remember, uh, by the rules of logarithms, I can actually bring this t over 5 and bring it up as a power. All right, so that's what I'm going to do next. 
So we have 1,000 E natural log of 3 to the power of T over 5. Those are inverses of one another. So I can actually get rid of that and I will end up with Y is equal to 1,000 3t over 5. Right, so really either one will work for what you're trying to do here. So either one of this will work, but I think this is a little bit nicer to look at. And this you should be able to recognize this. You actually have done this before. And remember that this is a 5 here, not a s. This is 5. All right, so let's go to uh, b now. All right, so let's go over here. On um, B, it's asking about what factor of the population I've increased in the first 10 days. Okay, so this one's pretty simple. All you have to do is plug in, remember Y is the population, the final population after a certain amount of years. All you have to do is plug in a 10 for T. So that would be, you know, that would be 3 squared right there. So Y would be equal to 9,000. But it's actually asking us by what factor would the population increase? And you can tell that's going to be by a factor of 9. So that's going to increase by a factor of 9. Okay. Let's now go to C. But at what time in days will the population have increased by a factor of 6? So really what you can do, if this is increased by a factor of 6, that would mean that the final population after a certain amount of days would be 6,000. Originally I had 1,000. Alright, and then I have this rate of growth over here. This exponential rate of growth. And all I have to do is solve for that. Okay, first I'm going to divide both sides by 1,000, so I get the 6 is equal to 3 to the power of t over 5. And I guess the question for you guys for is how do I get to this t, to this power, to this exponent? All right, so hopefully your answer was taking a natural log of both sides. Right, and by by the same rules that we talked about before, okay, the only reason I even need that stupid natural log of three here is because I can use and really you could have used any natural log if you or any type of log that you wanted to. So I can bring that back in here. Alright, so that would be natural log of six is equal to t over five natural log of three. Okay, so remember the natural log of three is just a number. All right, so I'm going to divide both sides by the natural log of 3 now. So I have t over 5 is equal to natural log of 6 over natural log of 3. And then now I'm going to multiply both sides times 5. And then if you do that, you get the answer is 8.155 days. At what time in days? So about that many days will it take. So a little bit over eight days. All right, so this is pretty algebra heavy. So if you have any questions over that, make sure and ask me. I know this is a long, long video. So finally, we got D. All right, so it's asking us to use the trapezoidal rule, which I'm pretty sure all of you remember. But if you remember, that's all right. Uh, notice that I have three equal subdivisions. All right, so the first thing I have to do is to figure out the thickness of those divisions or those uh, trapezoids. Really, that's the height of the trapezoid. But in order for me to do that, well, you can do two things. You can actually go, let's see, after six days, so between zero and six, and you have to have three subdivisions. So if you don't know how to do that, you have B minus A over N which is going to be 6 minus 0 over 3, so that's 2. So I'm going to go from 0 to 2, 
from 2 to 4, and from 4 to 6. So notice that I have 1, 2, 3. All right, so I have three subdivisions just like I wanted. Now, the formula, if you remember, is 1 half times b minus a over n. So this right here, or in this case, this is what goes right here. And then I'm going to multiply that times basically what amounts to the height, or in this case, the base of the trapezoid. Right, in order to get those heights, I'm going to have to use the original, or not the original equation, but the, the equation that I got right here, this one. And I'm going to have to plug in a zero there first. So we have 1,000 times 3, 0 over 5, plus, remember, all the middle stuff has to be multiplied times 2 because they're sharing a side. Okay, so I have 2, uh, yeah, we have 2, 1,000 times 3, 2 over 5, and notice that I'm using these numbers, so I'm going from 0 to 2 to 4 to 6. And then I have, let's see, plus 1,000 times 3, 4 over 5. I'm going to close this parentheses because that's the middle. And then finally, the last term would be plus. Notice that this last term is not being multiplied times 2. Plus, uh, let's see, we have 1,000 times 3 to the power of 6 over 5. And uh, if we do all the math here, notice that's going to be 1 here. Well, I'm going to assume you can do all the math. I'm still going to write it. Actually, I don't even want to write all that. It just takes too long. If you do all of this in your calculator, and hopefully you at least know how to type that in the calculator, you get that the answer would be, oh my gosh, 12,657.33 total bacteria. present after six days. Again, my apologies for the long video. It was just a lot of stuff to cover, and hopefully you'll have, you'll have a couple of days at least to try to get this done. All right, so if you got any questions, make sure and ask me. The homework section is not very long.